Greetings out there, Christians, friends, family. I am Pastor Richard Troy Johnson of Bethel Church of God, 1069 Fillmore Street, Bethel Church of God, 46402. Happy 4th of July out there, everybody. I'm so um, thankful that you're here with me in this 4th of July time. Um, we still have to be careful with our gatherings. Make sure that you're um, being safe, even though you're probably wanting to be with loved ones. But um, I'm thankful you're here this time to go through God's precious word. Uh, yeah, I, I think I got a joke for you. <laughs> this is an old one. But I remember my brother told me this one a while back. It was this, uh, it was once it was this head. It was nothing but a head. A head, and then, you know, the guy, the head could talk and everything. It was, it was a boy. And his mother would sit about on the windowsill every day to watch the kids play. And one day this, 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 this truck came by and this lamp fell out the truck. So the head, you know, dropped himself out the window and rolled himself down to the lamp and he rubbed against it and, and a genie came out. And the genie said, I, I give you three wishes. And the head was like, wow, wow. He said, I would love some arms, arms. And the genie gave him some arms. He sat a pair of arms by his side. He said, well, I can use some legs too. And so the genie gave him some legs and the legs went to the side and, and the, the head like, well, I need something to connect all this together. So could you give me a torso? And so the genie gave him a torso and that was his three wishes. And the head had a body and everything. He was so excited. He ran across the street, got hit by a cop. Now, the moral of the story, always stop when you're ahead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, all right. I know I'm going to get some comments for that one. <laughs> God bless you. If you have your Bibles, let's get it. Five, four, three, two, one. Genesis, the first book of the Bible. We're going to be started with today for the next few minutes. I'm going to talk about the image of God. And um, a lot of us are kind of, whether we want to admit it to anyone or not, we, we, we have a little concern about our image, don't we? Don't, yeah. We want to present a certain image to our co-workers. We want to present a certain image to our friends. We want to present a certain image to people that we're meeting for the first time. You ain't got to admit it, but I know you do. <laughs> we all do. It's something about presenting that image, the image that we want to project. And sometimes we can get so caught up in that image in trying to present it but that we lose the fact, especially Christians, of the, the true meaning of image. And I want to take us to our image as far as God's perspective is. Amen? Don't you think that's a good thing? When we're so concerned with our image, let's find out what God's perspective of our image is. Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. First book of the Bible, Genesis chapter 1. I'm going to start at verse, and, I, and this is, I'm going to be using a couple of extra scriptures than I normally do. So make sure, I want to make sure you write these down so you can go back and reference. Chapter, excuse me, chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let him, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over the, all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he them. Male and female created he them. Wow. Ain't that special? When God first created us, he created us in his own image. And with that image, he gave us rulership. He gave us rulership, and, 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 and Adam and Eve at this point, they were perfect. Sin had to come in, so the, the God gave them his image to reflect rulership to have dominion. Now we all know what happened a little bit later. 
they ate from the fruit of the knowledge of evil, knowledge of good and evil, and that image was tarnished. It was tarnished, but it was still the image of God. And what, what, what happened was when they ate from the, free, the fruit of the tree of knowledge, good and evil, they basically said, Lord, we're going to rule how we think we ought to rule. Wow. When you take God out the picture, you know, there's a lot of bad things can happen. When they ate from the fruit of knowledge of good and evil, they basically told God, we're going to rule how we think we ought to rule. And that changed the whole perspective. But I want you, you still got your Bibles, turn to Genesis chapter 9. Genesis chapter 9, verse 6. After the flood, there were eight people on the whole earth. Noah, his wife, his three sons, and their wives. And when the flood was over with and the, the God gave them permission to come out of the ark, God gave them new instructions. He told Noah in Genesis chapter 9, verse 6. Okay? He said this. This is one of the things he said. Whosoever sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For the image of God made he man. Wow. This was basically how our government issues the death penalty. This is how special God feels about man. That if a man sheds another man's life, his image, his, um, his life shall be taken by a man. If a man takes another man's life. God puts his special qualities in the image he put in man. Okay, so it, it's something God very, and I'm going to tell you this. One of the reasons I, I want to bring this up is if we realize how special the image of God is, we wouldn't be killing each other like we're doing. If we knew how God felt about every person, every male, every female, we wouldn't be killing like we're doing here today. Turn real quick with me to Colossians. Colossians chapter 1. Thank you, Lord. Colossians, that's in the New Testament, chapter 1. We all there? I'm going to start at verse... I'm going to start at verse 14 in whom we have redemption, talking about Jesus, through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? Woo, let me go on, verse 16. For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Wow. That sums it up about Jesus. See, his, his Godheadness, everything. He created everything. But I love the fact that it's explaining that Jesus is the very image of the God the Father. He's his image. So when man tarnished his image, when they ate from the knowledge of fruit and eat the fruit, of the knowledge of good and evil, God had a plan already set that he would send Jesus, the second Adam, who would not mess up, but who would reflect the image of God and would reflect what rulership is all about. You ask what rulership is all about? What did Jesus do? Jesus served humanity with his gifts. He taught, he healed, he fed. He expressed the true image of God. And that's the image we ought to be striving to get. That's the image we need to be striving to project, to serve people, not just to be a shot caller. Yeah, you do this, you do that, you do that. I'm the man, I'm the woman. That's not what servitude, that's not what leadership, that's not what being the image of God is all about. 
Jesus reflected that by the way he served mankind. And that's the image that we ought to be striving. Let me take you to one more passage of scripture. <laughs> James chapter 3. <laughs> James chapter 3, towards the end of the Bible, James chapter 3. I'm going to start at verse 9. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth, verse 10, out of the same mouth proceeded blessings and curses. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Wow. Let me remind you that James was writing to a church. <laughs> and he's basically saying you can't bless God and curse out men with the same mouth. Why did he say that? Now, I'm glad you asked. At the end of verse 9, he says, because which are, you're talking about man, which are made after the similitude or likeness of God. We're made in his image. So even when we have to correct someone, we need to do it in a respectful way instead of saying, it's amazing. I see people, you know, we talk about spiritual gifts, and I think some people think that gift is to tell people off. <laughs> What's your gift? My gift is to tell people off. <laughs> And you see that, let me, let me say this, let me bring this down home. You see that growing today. Because of the tensions surrounding the Gerald Floyd, I'm sorry, George Floyd, the, because of the tensions that are surrounding his death, people are voicing their opinion in such a disrespectful way. But Paul urges us, he urges Christians to don't bless God and curse man. Let's watch how we talk with one another. Because if we believe that we're created in the image of God, we will take it seriously. And even if, if you have to correct someone, do it in a respectful manner. You don't have to curse nobody out to get your point across. We're made in this image. I love you. And I pray that these scriptures would help you realize that you are special. And the way to bring about all those special qualities is to follow the true image. <laughs> the image of God that was fulfilled in Jesus Christ. God bless you. And I look forward to seeing you again. I love you. May the peace of God be with you.